Hey everyone, so I did get a comment that someone wanted to see how I plumbed in my wood burner into my house and my furnaces. Um, so that's kind of what this video is going to cover. This was just my way of doing it. Um, I'd never installed anything like this before. I'm not a professional, uh, just an amateur here. So, uh, you know, take what you see here um, with a grain of salt. But, uh, so here is where it's coming in the house. Now, I'm an engineer, I like efficiency. So every elbow and fitting and things like that that you have reduce the the efficiency in your line and causes a lot more head loss. So I wasn't going for the prettiest award for routing. Um, I wanted to do it as efficiently as possible with the least number of um, elbows and so on and so forth. So here's where it comes through the wall. Um, you can see I buried the electric lines with it going out to the house when I uh, had the trench open for that um, insulated line. Now I had the 32 millimeter PEX line. I think it's uh, this is similar uh, as one inch OD or one and a quarter inch um, or one inch ID or one and a quarter inch OD PEX. I don't understand why the 32 millimeter is more popular and uh, cheaper considering its metric, but hey, it is what it is. But anyway, um, like my friend at work says, you got your gazinha and your gazacha. One goes in, one goes out. Looking at this, I can't remember which one goes in or out, but it's relevant. So I had to have a uh, adapter there that goes from the 32 millimeter to um, that this is just one inch pipe in here anyway. So some may say, oh well, why'd you get 32 millimeter PEX pipe when you go one inch in the house? It's still less drag and head loss through the, I think I have over a hundred foot of pipe um, going out to the wood burner. So it's still less drag uh, even though I go down to one inch here. So anyway, um, I've got two ball valves there that I can shut that off, that loop there if I need to. Um, and then you can see I just routed it here in my garage. I never completed putting insulation on the line. Um, the garage gets pretty warm anyway and I'm, I'm not sure if it's just from the furnace over there or um, if these lines really give off that much in the in the spring and summer it's pretty cool in here which again I don't know if it's because this part is underground or again the the air handle unit is giving off cold enough water but anyway um, routed it across and then it first goes over to my basement uh, where it goes through the heat exchanger and my first furnace. So let's move over there and then we'll actually end up back here in a minute. All right, so coming into my basement now, you can see I just ran it along my sewage pipe here and comes in to all this, my water heater exchange. So wanted the water heater to go um, through the heat exchanger first um, someone suggested that that way you're kind of consistently getting hot, like steady temperature water out of it. I don't know that that really matters here. Um, I mean, you, yeah, if you're, if you're dumping in heat into a big water heater, um, I, I have a mixing valve coming out of it. So, you know, the, the water coming in is 175 ish. Uh, after it goes through that heat exchanger. So if I'm only drawing out 120 or so, you know, if I see some flexing from that, um, it wouldn't be too big of a deal and it would just kick on the water heater, you know, if, if this heat exchanger wasn't keeping up. Uh, so anyway, so I come in and I have a, a strainer valve here um, that, you know, collects any crap or debris if I need to. I haven't taken that out yet to see if anything's in it, but... Uh, I can drain that and it collects any debris before it goes into the heat exchanger. That's kind of a key point uh, for me. So it comes in the bottom here 
and I tried mounting this to the wall and it just didn't work. But honestly, the, all this one inch piping is so uh, fixed that I've seen people where they didn't even mount it to the wall and that's kind of what it did there. I installed a drain here. Uh, so I can drain the lines in the house is the lowest point within the house here. So I can drain all the water out of these lines if I want to. That was a big uh, thing that I wanted. Uh, and then it comes out the top here. After it comes in, it comes out the top and goes over to my first furnace. But I, I will get to that in a minute because there's a little more going on here. So if I step back... This is the cold water line coming into the house, coming from my well. Um, I heard someone do this, and I thought it was a great idea, and it, it turns out it worked wonderfully. Is I took this cold water line, and you know it goes into the water heater, but I teed it off, and I have it going into my wood burner line. And why I did that is if I rotate this handle here, I can fill my wood burner with water from here, from the house. I don't have to run a hose out to, you know, Tumbuk 2 to go fill it. I can fill it right from here. I, 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 I didn't initially fill it from here because I didn't want to drain my well and such. But, um, you know, if you need to top it off, I just open that valve for a minute or two um, and then close it. And it, it works pretty spectacularly. Um so, so that's why I've got this line coming in over here, um, sorry, onto my wood burner line. Um, and then of course, so otherwise I've got a cold water line that normally goes into the hot water heater. However, I have it teed off so that uh, when I have the wood burner going, I close this valve here. And then it has to go through the plate exchanger. And then it comes into the water heater. All right. Now, I, I plumbed this up so I could shut these off. Actually, I never um, just realized I never did that all year. Um, but they're like that is where I can close these lines and open this one. And now I have a direct line into the water heater so that I'm not putting well water all year long through this plate exchanger. I have a lot of filters um, into the water, so it's really clean water. But I wanted to plumb this so when the wood burner is not going, I just have my cold water going straight into the water heater. And I don't have to worry about any additional sediment or buildup you know, all year long circulating water through there. Um, and then one more line teeing up from here is going over to my mixing valve. So I know I got this blue because I didn't have a red line that day. But this is hot water coming out of the water heater. And then um, I've got my mixing valve. This is the cold water coming in straight from the well. And then I can control the temperature going to the rest of the house. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense. Like like I said, I know I just it looks like a crazy thing going on. Um, I wasn't too worried about aesthetics. So cold water coming in splits goes into my wood burner line. Another split is going straight into the water heater, but I have a bypass valve or bypass system that goes through the plate exchanger and I've got ball valves in these three legs so I can close this one and make it so that it has to run through the plate exchanger or I can close these and it goes straight into the water heater and coming from the wood burner we've got the strainer going in and then coming out like I said it comes out over and into my furnace so you can see I inserted a heat exchanger in here. Um, what I did was I cut a hole in this side of the furnace. Um, I, I looked in there first. I drilled a hole. I have a little boroscope. I wanted to make sure my, my A coils, which I think are located like down here, that it was far enough away from it 
Um, some people talk about, you know, when you run your air conditioning, you can actually freeze the water in here if it's too close. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but I, um, I, I cut a hole through here, rectangular hole, uh, slid it in there. Now, you can do a couple of options, and honestly, I can't remember which I did for this one. Um, you can put little angle brackets on the side, which I'm trying to look over here. I don't think is what I did. What what someone uh, in another video showed me was you you cut this a little high, all right. And then you cut a little slice and you bend that over. So so the face that you're cutting out here, if you look at it like this, it's like this. And you bend it over and it becomes a little shelf for it to sit on. Um, and then I did the same thing. Uh, no, okay. On this side, I added, I went ahead and added a little bracket. Or that that's what these are. Is these are little angle brackets that I just drilled in here, um, and I stuck them through some holes, and so it, it's just sitting on these two points on this side in there. Um, but you know, if you want to put a hole, if you wanted to slice this all the way across and put a piece of angle in there, you can. Um, some people I, I've seen, uh, you can cut it through to this side. And, and have the end of your coil sticking out, you know, as long as the heat exchange part is in there, but, you know, the loops of your coils may be out here. Um, I think that's the way my other, other furnace is. I'll, I'll check that on the other side. Um, but any, anyway, so uh, coming in the bottom, going up top, I have that because of natural circulation, whether it really applies here or not. You know, hot water wants the... Um, naturally rise um, so I wanted the hot water coming in the bottom so it, it may naturally want to rise up and through there and refresh itself even though um, I mean the, the pump is pushing it through but it, even if I shut the pump off there could be a little bit of circulation uh, here is the aquastat that I put on this is a Honeywell aquastat forget the model it was like c13300 I, I can't remember the exact model it, it's kind of irrelevant but anyway this is hooked up to the inside of my furnace and i have the temperature set um i think it's set there to like uh, 80 some degrees or so but this is a basically hot or not uh sensor is this sensor will detect if the water in this coil is above this temperature. If it is, then it tells the furnace, the, uh, I have an electric furnace, it tells the furnace only kick on the fan, which is great because I've got heat in these coils and it turns the fan on and blows the heat across the coils. But if this is not hot, uh, if this is cold, like right now, you know, I'm not running my wood burner, then this says, okay, if I need heat, I need to turn on the actual electric coils. Um, and what's great about that is if, if I load the wood burner and for some reason I don't get back to it, I don't know, for a, a day or so, um, it will automatically transfer over to the electric coils. Um, and that that's great because then I don't have to worry about, oh, you know, uh, the wood burner, the fire went out, and now I got to go switch this thing to electric, and I'm not home, so on and so forth. It will automatically um, transfer itself over. So even if I'm going to leave for, you know, say two, three days, I if I don't have anyone to fill my fire for me, I may fill it, um, you know, and, and it'll run for a day, and then it'll transfer over itself after after that day, Um Still prefer somebody to shut off the wood burner because the fan will run constantly. But anyway, that's the the great benefit here is once you're up to temperature, it tells the electric furnace, don't run the coils, and it's only running the fan. Uh, so coming out of there, it just goes up and over and back to my other furnace uh, in the garage. 
All right, one more thing I forgot to mention, because I said I was going to mention it, was about water freezing in these. Uh, what you can do, um, I didn't do it, even though I, because I, I came up one valve short, but um, you can put a drain valve, kind of like what I did here. Um, actually, I can drain that one from here, because it, it's lower. But anyway, it, if you don't have that luxury, you can put a drain valve here and just drain the water um, out of these. So you don't have to worry about anything freezing if you're running your air conditioning and what have you. I have ball valves up here on both sides of this loop. Um, so if I wanted to, I could just uh, drain the water from this section, so to speak. Um, and then you don't have to worry about anything freezing in there. It, it's just air. But uh, I've, I've left the water in there and I haven't had any issues. All right, so coming, so coming out of my basement, you can see I just basically have the same setup here. As it comes in and on its way in is the uh, aquastat. And then I've got a ball valve going in that I can isolate that, coming in the bottom, and then it goes out the top. Um, the, another key thing of having kind of two of these is if for some reason you are drawing, um, I, uh, let me take a step back. I have two thermostats in my house also. So one of these uh, goes to each um, furnace and, and they're kind of separate, separate systems, um, so to speak. Um, so like I mentioned before, did I come through? Yeah, okay. So you can see on this side was what I was talking about. On the other side was I cut the back side too and then folded those lips over um, here. Uh, so it's resting on that side. Or, or, or really, you don't even have to have it uh, folded out, but it's best to really, the, just the hole, it, it's sitting on the top of this hole is fine. You can see where those coils do stick out on, on this side. Um, so yeah, again, I, I didn't put a drain in over here. I have it over there on the workbench. And one of these days I, I, might, um, I might install it anyway. But uh, everything's been, been fine. So if you guys have any questions... I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I have to tell you guys, but, uh, oh, uh, one other thing. I use, uh, flex, these, um, shark bite fittings only because I didn't, I don't know how to solder and didn't want this to be my first time and screw them up and so on and so forth. So you can obviously solder, uh, connections. On, onto your heat exchangers. It's just not what I went with. I would prefer not to have the shark bites, but you know, honestly, if they leak or something like that, they are easily accessible that, that I can replace them. So I wasn't too worried about that. It's not like it's in the middle of a wall or anything like that. I can easily pop them off. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, leave them in the comments. I'd, I'd love to help you, love to answer them. Um, like I said, uh, amateur here, first time I did anything like this. So, you know, you do some research, you can certainly do it yourself, get yourself the tools, the crimping tools. Um, I bought all my fittings online just because it's a lot cheaper. If you buy them off of like eBay or something like that, you know, there's stores on eBay. You can get junk, um, items. Like I bought the copper rings in bulk and, and some of them were just literally garbage that I got, uh, but you know, if you go to Lowe's, you're, I, I think I figured, you know, I, I had hundreds of dollars in fittings just to do this job, and I would have probably been at least 50% more uh, to go to like Lowe's and buy them, so it, it just was a lot more feasible um, to, or and economical to buy them online. Um, but the, the PEX itself did come from Lowe's, just a uh, one-inch PEX roll. Um, yeah, hope to hear from you guys. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. 
Um, if you guys are doing anything like this, good luck and hope it works out for you.